I have a brand new MacBook Pro with 128 GB of RAM in front of me. And I'm going to try and run DeepSeek R1. Not a distilled version, as uh, some people are running, but the actual full DeepSeek R1 reasoning model. But this will be with quantization. Now, roughly for people who are not aware what quantization is, the full model is something like 671 billion parameters, and it would be roughly 1.2 terabytes of data or ideally RAM, which you would be needing. Now, these gentlemen here, Daniel and Michael from Unsloth, managed to bring it down to about 131 gigabytes in size from the, as they say, original 720 gigabytes. And this was done by changing around the precision of some of these layers. In any case, that's what we will be loading and that's what we will be running in our LM studio. Here you see I entered the prompt and the Unsloth, Unsloth DeepSeek R1 GGUF. Um, this particular model is loaded, so this is the actually full, the full model which we're using. As you see, the RAM is maxed out, 107.83 gigabytes, and now it starts generating. Remember that there's a first phase where the whole parameter, uh, the whole prompt is loaded and processed, and this takes a while, and then it will start generating tokens. It's thinking here, and as you see, it is quite slow, but it's coming. We'll look at the quality of the answer in a little bit. But for now, I want you to show, I want to show you the models. And this is the DeepSeek R1 GGUF, which we just floated. As you see, I have taken the very smallest of these models. And as I said before, the largest one would be 1.34 terabytes, which is at the original floating point uh, 16 bit version uh, parameter. And the one we're running here is the smallest one, which it's being shown as likely too large for this machine. And I had to disable some safety checks, but it's still running. Depending on the amount of RAM you would have, you might be able, able to run this next model. And possibly my thoughts is that it's using paging to the SSD, which is quite fast in a MacBook so that we are actually able to use more than 128 gigabytes of RAM, which it has built in. Now, if you want to go back, that's the kind of performance you can expect from a MacBook M4 Pro Max with 128 gigabytes of RAM on the smallest DeepSeek R1 full quantized model. What do you think about this performance? Leave a comment below in the comments and I am going to make a small stop here in the video and let it generate a bit more so that you can read through the answer it's, it's generated. The quality is quite good, I would say. So it's suggesting that uh, thinking about a business that can scale, that this seems important because you need something that doesn't require proportional increase in effort for each customer, like software platforms. I do not think this is usable in an interactive way. Possibly this might be useful in a passive way. I'm going to let it run for a little bit more, so you can start a little bit, uh, you can read a little bit more of it. You see that characters are generated quite slowly and that's not the chat experience you're used to in, let's say, OpenAI. But it is a completely offline model which is run completely on your Mac so you can use it in an airplane and you can also be sure that your 
data and your questions are not sent to anyone. Continues to generate. Now it's thinking about some other assets like stocks, real estate, cryptocurrencies, and about diversification. Generate talking about cryptocurrencies and education continuous learnings. By the way, I can get I can feel the MacBook Pro getting warm. Again, very useful and uh, very sensible output. I would say definitely on par with what you would expect from OpenAI 01. And this is the reasoning behind these things. Letting it run. Now it has started to generate the actual answer. Briefly scroll up so you can review the entire answer. It's already quite a bit which has been generated here. And has thought for 58 minutes and 27 seconds. And you know what, this answer feels a little bit more valuable because we are actually waiting for about an hour to get it. So I'm going to let it continue. But you kind of get the general feeling for it, right? That it's quite slow, it's not interactive, but the quality is quite good. little bit more progress here. Scalable entrepreneurship, strategic investment, diversification, technology leverage. Continuing to generate. We are drawing to an end here with a generation. It's giving us a summary. I would say it's quite uh, reasonable feedback. For example, is cultivate mental resilience, resilience a bit to navigate setbacks and so on and so on. It's quite a good thing. I want to point out now that it's finished generating this report line, which is at the bottom, which is quite interesting. So we were, we generated or the Mac generated a total of 1,263 tokens. It took 6.07 seconds to generate the first token and was generating 0.22 tokens per second. Now, this is actually much too slow, about 100 times too slow for you as a user to feel 
pleasant. You would be expecting something in the range of 30 to 40 tokens. So uh, this is not something which is useful in real time. But the interesting thing is it is able to run DeepSeq R1, of course, in this heavily quantized fashion, but it's able to run it. Now also let me show you uh, the configuration of the Mac so you can see it for yourself. As you can see, it's a um, MacBook Pro Apple M4 Max with 128 gigabytes of memory. And um, yeah, that's it for this video. I will be testing some other models as well and will be uploading them on YouTube so you can get a feeling for the performance and make an educated decision whether a Mac is a great machine to run these models on. If this is useful to you, please subscribe to my channel and recommend it to a friend who is curious about whether to get a Mac in order to run DeepSeq R1. Uh, for me. Thank you and have a great day.